Hello and welcome to this week's video on My Hero Academia. This week I'm reviewing the episode I Am Here. We're going to kick off this review as we always do with these reviews by talking about the positives, all the things I enjoyed about this particular little, little adventure. And we kick off with the headline positives. I have to say that this is an episode which was fantastically well animated. All Might's reveal sets up for some interesting future things. As let's face it, not much really happened in this episode. It's good to see that the UA sabotage concept is coming back into play and, well... Everything to do with the Todoroki family was just brilliant, 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 brilliant. We'll kick off as we do when we go into these reviews, that this part of the review rather, by talking about the animation. And I have to say that it was creative and very well choreographed. There is a darker, moody atmosphere throughout this episode, which helps to convey the bleak situation that our cast currently find themselves in. If this was and remained more of a consistent visual theme throughout the next few episodes or even just the past few episodes i would really have liked that it gives us this greater sense that we really are in the dark middle of the story where hope is fading and darkness looks like it may soon take hold as we transition from the lighter brighter adventurous tone that we once had in this series to something more dark bleak and miserable all before things finally turn around and the heroes save the day maybe we'll soon see of course, given the structure of this season thus far, we'll soon see if that's going to be the case. I mean, uh, we've only got a couple episodes left of this season, and it looks like that next episode, at least, we're going to be dipping into the character of our characters a little bit more. So maybe this bleaker, more existential nightmare that our characters find themselves in will continue on for at least the next couple episodes or so. I have to say that I really did like the creative flares that we saw throughout this episode, the brief moments where details and aspects of it were being done in a more creative and different way to what we usually have here a greater sense of I wouldn't say risk but a greater desire of just doing something different and presenting certain action sequences in a lot more of a I'd hate to say the word again, but a lot more of a creative way minus the shot of all for one looking down at all might which honestly looked like something you'd expect to see from an internet meme I have to say is that we have a lot more Again, I don't want to say the word creativity again because after a certain point it starts to lose its meaning But there is a great degree of creativity a lot more innovation in how we see and how we present certain aspects within this series or rather in this episode Most of that is seen with the stuff with Tanya and Shoto the scenes with them together When we have them moving so fast that the image becomes distorted as the sheer g-force that they're traveling at starts to, to cause them to just it back I like the way that that looked part of it did look kind of goofy but at the same time I like the fact that we're actually showing the speed of these characters in a little bit more of an interesting way than just drawing a bunch of speed lines and leaving it at that the thing with the ice jet I think is a great image I think there's a fun quality to it yes it's kind of schlocky but at the same time it has just a, a it makes for a neat visual image it makes of something that does feel as though it does play to the more quirkier side of this series an element of it which i think that at times often gets overlooked if not sidelined just the sheer breadth of just wow we're really going to do something based on that this is a world where anyone can have superpowers of anything you would literally have someone whose quirk is they are a jet and they're just a jet and we don't really see that level of creativity that much at this point as it feels as though every single person's superpower has to be something that directly helps them in a fight which is a rant for a different time but to just get this kind of creativity here again i'm saying that word again i really do like and it's something that we don't really see a lot of in superhero fiction these days because a lot of people would complain that it looks too silly and then you'd have those exact same people complaining that artists and writers aren't willing to create risks which is a whole other durant and discussion for another time but i think you can kind of guess the kind of people i'm referring to when i mention that I think the greatest and most arresting of the images that we get in this episode, however, are the ones connected to Endeavour and the rest of the Todoroki's family's connection and confrontation with Dabi. I will be going into that into greater detail later on, but whilst we are talking about the animation side of it, I just love how grotesque and 
nasty all of that looked in certain moments. Just seeing just how much Dabby has just become this burnt-out, demonic-looking puss. This being that's so consumed by their own rage, they don't even resemble a human anymore. Taken now to its most literal endeavour, this literal representation of that. They don't look human anymore. They've transitioned into something different. And we just see the total look of desperate horror that is on Endeavor's face almost throughout all of that. And then at the very end of it, we have this breaking of who Endeavor once was to the man he should have always been deep down. But we'll discuss that, as I say, in greater detail later. Of course, just the sheer visual spectacle of this massive ball of fire growing in the distance as all the evacuees desperately try and escape. That is a horrifying image. And I, again, I really do like that because it just... It shows the horror of living in a world of superheroes in a way which just feels a lot more natural. Like, you're, as a human being, as a civilian, no, I'm not going to see the blow-for-blow blow superhero punchy stuff. You're just going to see the destruction. You're just going to see the beams of energy if you happen to be quick enough or the balls of fire. I mean, imagine you're just going about your day in a world of superheroes when you see this big ball of blue flame growing on the horizon. You'd shit yourself. And just seeing that kind of thing in the desperate situation, seeing all the civilians running for cover, desperately trying to escape it, that's something you just don't see in superhero fiction. The civilian side of all of this, the innocent man or woman or child or whomever on the street just isn't shown, certainly not in the uh, DC cinematic universe over the past decade or so, but that's a whole other discussion for all of the time of it. Of course, it has to be said that all Might's presence in this episode feels less, I am here and more, I am also here. I will be blunt, I know what's coming up next with him, that is something that has been spoilt for me well in advance. And to be blunt, this is not a green light to share stuff about that in the comments down below. That's not an excuse to it, just keep any spoilers for anything that may or may not be coming down to the pipeline. Just don't do it. Just, just don't. I want to get to the end of all of this with as few spoilers as physically possible. Because there's not much left to spoil, let's be honest. But in any case, I thought that with all the stuff I know it's coming down the pipeline, with, with, with what I knew what was going to be the case, with certainly what was teased in this episode, that we were going to get into that stuff. But we don't. And this whole sequence of events, this whole moment that we see of All Might there outside in the rain before he starts to shift into his superpowered form, it feels to me like a T-Rex in the Thames moment. For those of you who don't know, at this point it's a phrase of turn of phrase, I'm not used that much in quite some time. Back, 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 way back when, when I first started to review television programs, I started by reviewing the first episode of the what was then the brand new series of Doctor Who, with the first one with Peter Capaldi in it, and there was an episode where it had a T-Rex in the Thames, and leading up into that episode in the trailers and all the media, it felt as though that would be a major keystone to the episode, and at the end of the day, it wasn't. And as such, the phrase T-Rex in the Thames is something that I use when I discuss something that feels like it's in an episode of a TV program or in a movie that's just there for the sake of a trailer and for a tease, more so than it's there for the sake of greater substance. Of course, in this case, the substance will come in later. We are, however, only two episodes away from the end of the season, so maybe it will be the big thing at the end of the season, the big end of season tease, the big turning point of some degree or another before we get into next year's season. I think that it would make for a perfect one because there's still a part of me that just really does not know what that big end image for this season would be. Something that sets up for the next one, no matter how long or short it may end up being, but that, the, in terms of length, of I, that's a discussion for all of the time. Maybe a video of an all of the time, but all the same, the image of All Might in his full power about to go and battle all for one, even if they don't actually get to it in that final episode of this season, would make for a fantastic tease and a big arresting image for next season, but we'll cross that bitch when we crumb to it. I know I mispronounced that, but whatever, we'll move on. The sabotage plot thread, I'm happy, came into play again. I will admit it's not quite in the way that I expected that it would do, but at the very least, it feels a lot more connected to the current series of events rather than being its own separate thing. There are moments in this season where it, it, it runs the risk of feeling like 
less of one major battle spread over a wide area where I was getting snapshots of it, and more so like some kind of superhero anthology, for better or worse. And given how things are going right now with the, uh, the evacuation of UA, you know, within the story, the sabotage is making it all that harder, the battle with Dabby means that one of the tunnels can't be used, and all that works for me. It feels as though we actually is this greater interconnected thing, and it doesn't feel to me like it's just upping the stakes for the sake of upping the stakes. It feels as though this is just a natural knock-on series of events, one thing laterally leading to the other. We have had it hinted throughout this season thus far, the natural ramifications of Dabby's battle, about how it's disrupting weather patterns across the Pacific, and the idea that thereafter he could end up growing in power to such the extent that it's directly potentially impacting the evacuation paths is something that doesn't feel like it's out of left field. Sure, him using his mother's quirk, if not partially, has the risk of doing that, but not to a terrible extent. It just feels like, a, again, a knock-on effect of something leading to something leading to something else in a way which has more of a logical through line to it rather than we need to do this thing because this is the thing that's going to scare the pants off the audience. In an episode which is, of course, named after All Might's catchphrase, what we have here is the grand emotional climax of the Todoroki family storyline. Unless, of course, we get a thing in sometime next season going, Oh no, he's awake again! Oh, 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 oh! Which I hope isn't the case. Let's just put this stuff to one side like now. We've we've already had at one point in this season a point where I could actually say, you know what, this will be a fine way to wrap things up with Dabby. We don't need to be doing this for a third time. As I think that what we get in this episode feels, if nothing else, definitive. But at the very least, it does feel brilliant. It is one of those situations where it feels almost impossible to really talk about all of it because of just the sheer quality that we have on show here. It's like trying to define the vastness of the universe. It's something that is beyond the pale of human comprehension, let alone something that you can accurately articulate the beauty and splendour of it all. But I do have to say that I think that all of it ultimately plays out in a way which is nearly pitch perfect. There was a part of me that when it became clear that, oh... Dabby's awake again and he's going to start causing a problem that all we'd end up getting is effectively Shoto versus Dabby round two. And that's ultimately all it would end up being it would be, oh, Shoto has to go a level beyond, a level beyond. And buildings are getting thrown about and there's explosions and lasers being rah. And that's not what we get here. Whilst there is certainly some hero superpowered thrills and spills, it still has an emotive core to everything that makes it significantly more substantial than I think it could otherwise otherwise have been. It constantly sets up that it's going to go one way but ultimately pivots out the way of that to provide us something which personally I think is a lot more emotionally effective than what we could have ended up getting. We have Endeavour coming to the realisation that the only choice that he has in this situation to try and save all these people is to sacrifice himself. Even though he knows deep down there's a good chance that this won't work and at best all it's going to mean is that maybe a couple extra people are going to survive. We have Dabby's mother charging in to try and make things right even though she knows that she can't survive an intense heat like this she's doing it in part to get through to her son in part to try and buy some time for everyone else but deep down she's fighting for him in a way that she never had the strength to do so before we have dabby's other siblings charging in to save their mother and to try and make some sense of the pain that all of this has caused to try and get through to dabby and make them see that they are a family and that they can still be a family despite everything that has happened, despite everything that has happened to all of them. Just the sheer cavalcade of all these different thoughts, all these different feelings, all these different emotional connections to Dabby and how each of these characters then try to communicate that sincerely or not I think is infinitely more impactful and infinitely stronger than had it just been Endeavour punching Dabby for a little bit before Shoto came in and took the win. Which, to be fair, he does, 
but he does so in a way which does feel infinitely more emotively satisfying than had this really have been just some kind of big superhero punchy fight with people going a level beyond a level beyond you're not dealing with your average super saiyan anymore i think that that in itself is something that i can be thankful of it does feel like this is a genuine culmination of so much with these characters that this rounds up each and every single one of them in a way which feels satisfactory and despite all of that dabby still hates his family there is no great reconciliation there is no we always love you there's no grand new understanding there is no hollywood ending of just this big family hug of everyone coming together and saying you're still one of us we still love you whatever you do it's just the bitter embers of a life that has burnt with a near constant never ending rage and that in itself i think is again infinitely more important than just oh dabby and shota are fighting all of a sudden dabby well he looks like he's gonna use his super move but then shoto uses his super move and it it blows up dabby and you get the thing where the 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 drawn in lines to show that they're being blasted away and oh it's really sad because shoto had to kill him and oh maybe things could have been different glad we didn't go down that path because this ultimately i think works a lot more and this is all rounded off with endeavor doubling over and just saying sorry to everyone and that itself is just such a brilliant way to just round off all of this and round off his character arc it makes for probably one of the most powerful moments in this season and one of the most powerful moments in this entire series it's the kind of just emotive call this grand final hurrah of the character i think is what it was needed Whilst the story itself could have required him to sacrifice himself, as that itself feels a lot more heroic and a lot more keeping in superhero fiction, and there will be arguments that maybe he should have done that for the sake of his storyline to truly redeem what an awful piece of shit human being that he is, to try and make something better of himself, as that itself would feel a lot more heroic in the traditional sense of it, and the traditional sense of superhero fiction. But this feels more human and consistent with his arc as a character. It's all of this time on this program has been about him learning to be a hero. But really it's about him learning to be a role model. But in truth it's actually about him learning to be a father. To be the man he should always have been rather than the man that his ambitions turned him into. It's him doing something he should have always have done throughout dabby's life and just asked him how he was how he's feeling giving his son a chance to just get the pain that he's feeling inside of him physically emotionally off his chest and giving him a chance to just speak freely and just to be himself and i think that that is a better way of rounding all of that off than just a superhero fight and the fact that the big final image the big final act of this storyline is seemingly just endeavor being the dad he always should have been i think is the perfect way that all of this could have been rounded off and i hope that this is effectively the last bit of the stuff with dabby and the todoroki family the rest of the todoroki family can get involved in all this in whichever way they will do they can use their superpowers in whichever way there is maybe someone who are out with sacrifice i don't fucking care as long as this is the end point with all the stuff with dabby because anything after this point you can't top this and anything after these points is just going to undermine this in a way that i would be shocked and stunned and frankly disappointed if they did anything with this with with all of that said, let us pivot into the negatives. And look, I can't help but feel that the bait and switch with the title is deceptive in a way which feels weird to me. Like, I, I, I know that in the grand scheme of things, I'm relatively new to anime and manga. And something I've de come to despise with anime and manga particularly is how sometimes you'll get episodes which feel as though the first half of it should have been the, an, an extra bit at the end of the previous episode or it feels as though you've got an episode that's made up of two separate halves a half that should have gone in one episode and a half that should have gone in the next episode and there is a part of me that feels as though this isn't the case here because this isn't like oh we got a half of an episode with uh uh 
All Might becoming All Might. It was just a visual image. It was just a T-Rex in the Thames bit. Just something that I'm sure we'll be going to greater detail towards the end of this season, if at not some point in next season, which is something he desperately needs to go into greater detail of, because whilst I do basically know what happened there, we still need it bloody well stating fucking explicitly. I still feel this as a part of me that this deception is deliberate. It's something to keep people interested keep people interested who hate the Todoroki family and their storyline. Because I know that there are some people on YouTube who really fucking hate all that stuff and have made no bones about the fact that they hate everything to do with that storyline and would rather it wasn't in the series for whatever reason. Maybe because they want Endeavor to just be this binary good guy or they just want this show to be just about Midori or just don't want the complications of all of it. I don't know, but... At the end of the day, it makes it feel as though, okay, when All Might comes out and he's starting to use his power again, it feels like the writer's going, okay, here's your superhero punchy action cape stuff. Now, I'm going to go and do something of substance. Like, it feels like, okay, you, you can have one of, you can open one of your presents early, but now we're going to sit around and wait for Grandma to open her, open hers or something. I don't know where the metaphor is going that, but you get the idea. It feels like something that's been done for the sake of keeping a particular slice of the fan base satisfied whilst the rest of the fan base just sit down and just enjoy the drama that we have unfolding here but whatever i will see where all it ends up going with all that said let us get into the overview and i have to say that this is a fantastic episode there is a part of me that would have been perfectly fine had the entire runtime just been centered around the todoroki family and had just been centered around them just dealing with all of this but at the same time the deception kind of ends up setting you up for the surprise that oh we actually are getting into all of this and we are actually having all this wrap up now oh and it's wrapping up in a way that feels uh satisfactory and feels totally consistent with these characters oh this is great yes the bait and switch of it feels deceptive i think that all the stuff with all might and where he currently is right now needs a whole episode dedicated to it and i don't know whether or not we're going to end up getting that i hope that we do and I hope that it is a full episode and not just, oh, this is how this came to be. And it's part of a different episode before we go off and funny about with some other thing that's going on with all of this. But we'll soon see about all of that. And with all that said and done, let us get into Comment Corner. It's time for Comment Corner. We're running rather late now, so I'm going to have to expedite this quite a bit. We kick off with Big X1 who says, I could have skipped the post credit scene from last week. This referring to the episode before last week. Uh, and that was seeing as it was part of last week's opening part of the episode, and they are looking forward to this week's episode as it looks like it might be fire. Ironically, I think that it might have been very inaccurate, unintentionally accurate that, because let's face it, this episode didn't quite go the way we thought it was going to do, and there was a lot of fire. But anyway, thank you for your comment. Now we come to Scott TV Gamer again. I can't really go into the fullness of this one because of the fact that we are desperately running short of time, but... They talk about how the fact that their big issue with the last week's episode is not so much the episode itself, but it's more so the preview for this week's episode being... <laughs> well, it kind of revealed a little bit too much for them, and in the grand scheme of things, having seen the episode, I think that I do agree, especially bearing in mind that as far as things go, it didn't really mean anything. But then they go on to discuss about how the sludge villain, the mud man monster villain, didn't actually die, he's just been subdued by purple man's power uh gigantomarmacus might be dead we don't really know yet and whilst they disagree the fact that it feels rushed it does end up helping adding to a credence that alpha one's plans maybe aren't quite the be all end all that they think that ends up doing and they do agree with me from my previous episode that i that the absence of the twice clones feels kind of a little bit screwy but at least in this episode, we do get an explanation that the Wild Wild Pussycats are doing their best to just fight them off and keep them back. Presumably, the rest of the cast is doing so as well. So, well, that explains their absence for the most part. Could have, I do still as though they probably should have been at least in the background of a couple of shots. But still, last week's episode was good. This week's episode is better. But let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favourite, subscribe, click the bell and do all the YouTube stuff that YouTube wants you to do. Go on, it'll do me a power of good. Until next time, my friends, goodbye.